Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core studio. Welcome to the show. Good morning and welcome to day two of the official Kamigawa Neon Dynasty spoiler season. Yesterday we got a lot of exciting things, including a, wait for it, legendary artifact creature equipment jellyfish. Yeah, that, uh, that's a thing. We also got a Phyrexian Planeswalker. Yeah, uh, poor Tamio is now the very first Phyrexian Planeswalker, and she is quite scary. And finally, yesterday, we also finally got the real Jenga Taxius, and this thing is brutal. But the hits just don't stop coming, because today we got Kodama of the West Tree, and well, like the thumbnail and probably the description and the title of the episode, it's insanely powerful. So what does this Kodama do, and why is it so powerful? Well, let's jump into it to find out. So overnight, this card was spoiled, and thank you to the kind people of the internet for translating it, and uh, here's my custom version of it. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I just noticed that I actually didn't make the, um, uh, the set symbol mythic. This is a mythic card. My bad, I'm not going back to change that. Anyways, Kodama of the West Tree is a 3-3 spirit that costs 2 and a green, and it has reach. It also says, modified creatures you control have trample, and when every modified creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. This is an absolutely incredibly powerful card. I mean, this thing is just bonkers. A quick reminder that modified creatures is essentially like a new um, culmination of words? I don't know exactly how we describe it. Basically, it's kind of like historic, which is like a grouping of certain things where it's like, you know, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. In the same way, modified creatures are essentially ones that have counters on them or have an aura on them that you control or that have an equipment on them. So first up, Kodama is a 3-3 with reach. That's, you know, okay, not bad, I guess. A decent blocker against flyers. More importantly, obviously, modified creatures you control have trample. So any of those creatures that have any of those requirements met, again, an aura on them that you control in equipment or, you know, a counter on them, now those creatures have trample. But obviously, the most impactful part of this entire card is that last part that whenever any of your modified creatures hits an opponent, you get to ramp. That is absolutely insane, especially for a low to the ground commander like this one that you can get down very early. Now, of course, there are a couple directions that you can actually go with this commander. I mean, obviously, again, you know, when it comes to modified creatures, you've got options like auras or equipment, but I think the most likely direction and the easiest one to go and probably the most powerful build for this commander has got to be plus plus one counters. There are a ton of plus plus one counter synergies in green already, and yeah, this can easily take advantage of all of those and make them even more impactful, because again, you're just going to be ramping at an absurd rate with this commander. So I could definitely see some sort of a go-wide strategy that works to get counters on all of your creatures, and you just basically swing out, and you probably have some other ways to actually get your creatures through, but you know, on top of that, if your creatures are big enough, they're going to have trample anyways because of this commander, so it can help get damage through on its own. I mean, the amount of lands that you're going to be able to get out with this commander is just going to be absolutely incredible, and your opponents are going to be very jealous and very upset, and um, yeah, this commander is going to be quite powerful. And just one more thing of note really quick, uh, this is probably going to be the last of the Kodamas because we've got all the cardinal directions as well as, well, the center one. Really quick, let's just cover the old ones before we jump into cards for a build around this commander. 
So yeah, in the original Kamigawa block, we got Kodama of the South Tree, Kodama of the Center Tree, and Kodama of the North Tree. And you might not recognize these cards even if you've been playing Commander for a while because, well, none of them are very popular commanders and each of them are pretty much complete trash. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh and I'm very sorry if you actually play one of these as your commander, but, but yeah, none of them are all that impactful. Kodama the South Tree says whenever you play a Spirit or Arcane spell, each other creature you control gets plus plus one and gains trample until end of turn. So, Mono Grain Spirit Arcane Tribal. Yeah, not the most popular thing out there. Kodama the Center Tree says its power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control, and it's got Soul Shift X Rex the number of spirits you control. So, again, Mono Grain Spirit Tribal. Yay! Or how about the 6 4 with Trample? Kodama the North Tree can't be the target of spells or abilities. So, you I mean your opponents can't target it, but neither can you! So have fun trying to Voltron. Regardless, the Kodama's got a massive power boost, or at least I guess the perception of a Kodama got a massive power boost when the next one came out. And that was of course Kodama of the East Tree, which came out in Commander Legends, and yeah, this thing just... Well, it gave the Kodamas, um, finally something to be proud of. It's a 6-6 with Reach that says, Whenever the permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put on the battlefield this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. And on top of that, it has partner somehow. So yeah, this is an incredibly powerful partner. And just, I mean, if this was a commander on its own, it would still be incredibly powerful. I mean, at the very least, whenever you get any permanent in play, you can just say, oh, I've got a land in my hand, let's just get that into play. So, yeah, massive amounts of ramp with this commander, and there's a lot of broken things that you can do with it. I mean, see bounce lands. Anyways. So though, you know, north, south, and center aren't really all that great, you know, in many formats, including commander, uh, the east tree definitely makes up for that, and so does the west tree, which, I mean, has the potential to be even more powerful being a lower to the ground commander that might be able to ramp you even quicker. So when building a deck around Kodama of the West Tree, I would definitely consider cards like Renata Call to the Hunt, Loyal Guardian, and Fangren Firstborn. Again, I do believe that plus plus one counters is probably the easiest way to go with this commander in the most effective way, and each of these cards can make it so that your entire team, well, can get counters pretty easily. Renata Call to the Hunt says, each other creature you control enters the battlefield with additional plus plus one counter on it. So this essentially just says, hey, whenever your creatures enter, they get bigger and they are modified, so you're welcome. Having automatically modified creatures obviously works very well with Kodama, who wants you to hit your opponents with modified creatures. And then Loyal Guardian has Lieutenant at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control your commander, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. So even if you already have creatures in play that don't have counters on them, you know, unlike Renata, which you have to have in play before you cast them, Loyal Guardian just says, hey, we're going to combat. Cool, all of your creatures are modified now. Have fun. Speaking of which, Fangren Firstborn is somewhat similar, a 4-2 beast that has, whenever it attacks, put a plus one counter on each attacking creature. So if your creatures weren't modified before the attack, now they're slightly bigger, and yes, they are modified, so have fun hitting your opponents and getting an incredible amount of lands. I mean, of course, the list could go on and on with ways to get counters onto your creatures, because there are a ton of them, especially in green. And yeah, just a couple other ones I want to highlight really quick. Primeval Protector, Strength of Pack, and Strength of Tajaru. Primeval Protector is a 10-10 for 10 in a green, but you're never going to pay that. It's going to cost one less to cast for each creature your opponents control, and when it enters the battlefield, you get a creature on each creature you control. Sorry, misspoke. Each other creature you control, so your 10-10 just stays a 10-10, but that's okay. So yeah, the more creatures that your opponents have in play, the less this 10-10 costs to cast, and uh, yeah, sometimes you can just get this for a single mana, which is just a lot of fun. And then that massive 10-10 just says, hey, all your other creatures are modified now and slightly bigger. Speaking of which, Strength of the Pack is a sorcery for four green green, and it says, put two plus one counters on each creature you control. Very simple, but very effective in a deck like this. A somewhat more flexible card, though, is Strength of the Tajru, which is an instant for X green green. It's got multi-kicker one. It says, choose target creature, then choose another target creature for each time this spell was kicked. Put X plus one counters on each of them. Again, you're going to have absolutely no trouble ramping in this deck, so you can pump an incredible amount of mana into this to either make one creature gigantic or spread it out a bit as well. And since it's at instant speed, you can utilize this as a fantastic combat trick to, well, either take out opponent or a lot of their creatures or just really hit hard. Next up, a deck like this can definitely utilize a lot of low to the ground in evasive creatures, and you've got a good amount of options out there, even in green, with cards like Treetop Scout, Ornithopter, and Signal Pest. 
Tree Top Scout is a 1 1 L for a green that can't be blocked except by creatures with flying. And actually, just to note this really quick, I think that's really funny because it doesn't mention reach. So even if a creature has reach and could usually block creatures with flying, it can't block Tree Top Scout for whatever reason. I'm sure actually reach probably wasn't keyworded at the time. That's probably the reason. Anyways, next up, Ornithopter, a 0 2 Flying Thopter. 4-0. Now, of course, Ornithopter can't actually, you know, deal combat damage on its own because it's a 0-2, but again, that doesn't really matter because with this deck, you are focused on getting counters on your creatures to actually get that benefit from your commander anyways. So yeah, just get this zero mana creature down and then get a counter on it and congratulations, you've got ways to ramp with this zero mana card. Or, you know, okay, we can step things up just a little bit to one mana with Signal Pest, which is a fantastic low of the ground evasive creature, a 0-1 pest with Battle Cry that can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. See, there's the reach. Anyways, Battle Cry means that whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one with zero until end of turn. So this low to the ground evasive creature helps your other creatures hit even harder. But we can also take advantage of those lands that we're going to be going and getting and making even more creatures with things like Spore Mound, Zendikar's Royal, and Howl the Night Pack. Spore Mound says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Zendikar's Royal essentially does the exact same thing, but it makes us a 2 2 elemental. So whenever your modified creatures hit opponents, again, for every single one that hits, you're going to go get a land, and also with one of these in play, you're also going to get another creature. And then maybe let's say you've got, you know, Renata in play. Those creatures come into play with counters on them so that next turn when they swing, you can get even more lands and more creatures and you see where this is going. Or you can just make a massive army out of absolutely nowhere with Howl the Night Pack, a sorcery that says put a 2-2 green wolf creature token onto the battlefield for each force you control. And again, 2-2s might not be all that big. I mean, they can still be very threatening when you have a ton of them, but obviously you've got plenty of ways to get more counters on them to make them deadlier and to get you more lands. And of course, outside of, you know, evasive creatures, we have plenty of ways to actually help get our army through with things like Bellowing Tangleworm and Champion of Lampholt, and maybe even just, you know, Beastmaster Ascension. Bellowing Tangleworm has Intimidate, and it says other green creatures you control have Intimidate. So now your green creatures can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So again, green creatures. So yeah, if a player doesn't have any artifact creatures and they're not playing green, congratulations, you are going to be able to get your army through on them and get a ton of lands. Speaking of which, there's Champion of Lambholt, a 1-1 that says creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholt's power can't block creatures you control. On top of that, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, put a plus plus one counter on Champion of Lambholt. So the larger that Champion of Lambholt gets, the less likely your opponents are to be able to block your army. Very quickly, it can get to the point where essentially your entire army is unblockable with this in play. And even if your opponents can block your army, well, sometimes that's not going to matter because of a card like Beastmaster Ascension. It says, whenever a creature you control attacks, you may put a quest counter on Beastmaster Ascension, and as long as there are seven more counters on it, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. So now your army is going to become absolutely massive, and again, remember that your commander also, on top of everything else it says, it says, modified creatures you control have trample. So even if your creatures aren't evasive, if you make them massive, you are going to be able to dish out a lot of damage and get a lot of lands. And then, you know, next turn, probably get more creatures and more modifications, and dish out more damage, and, and yeah, this commander is pretty disgusting. And speaking of disgusting things, let's talk about Kaza Ruthless Stalker, or in Frostfang, an inspiring call. The Ruthless Stalker is a 3-3 that has partner, but that doesn't matter, and it says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus plus one counter on that creature. So on top of benefiting whenever our creatures hit our opponents by, you know, getting lands, we get an additional counter on them every single time we hit. Or, you know, if they aren't already modified when they hit, well, now they are going to be modified for next time. And then Orin Frostfang helps us out in multiple ways. It says, attacking creatures you control have death touch, and whenever a creature you control deals common into a player, draw a card. Giving our attacking creatures death touch makes it a lot easier for them to get through. I mean, or at least it makes it more difficult for our opponents to decide to block them. And on top of that, again, the benefit for when they hit is huge, drawing us a card for every single one that hits. And of course, Inspiring Call is a fantastic card in pretty much any plus plus one counter build. It says, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. So this not only protects our army, but it also draws us an insane amount of cards all at once. Now, when it comes to Kadama of the West Tree, we've talked about how it can be a fantastic commander, but it can also obviously be an incredible card in the 99 of other decks, like, you know, Toski, Bear of Secrets. Toski is a 1-1 that can't be countered, it's indestructible, attacks each combat of Fable, and the most important thing though is whenever a creature control deals combat to a player, draw a card. 
So yeah, a deck built around Toski is already going to have a bunch of low-to-the-ground and evasive creatures, and it very well might already have some counter synergies in there as well, or, you know, other ways to modify. So if you've got those in that deck, have fun drawing a ton of cards and also getting a ton of lands thanks to Kodama. Next up, how about a fantastic commander, in fact, my very first commander with Rishkar Pima Renegade. Rishkar is a 2-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you get a counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature you control a counter on it has tap add green. So, this commander is highly incentivized to get counters essentially on all of its creatures, and when you do so, again, those creatures are modified, so now your creatures can not only tap for a ton of mana, but they can also, again, when they hit, ramp you as well. So, that is a pretty deadly combination, and yeah, you're gonna have access to an absurd amount of mana, more mana than you could probably ever use. Uh, okay, I mean, that's over-exaggeration. Of course you can use all the mana, you're in green. Next up, if I am talking about plus plus one counter commanders, I of course have got to bring up Atraxa Praetor's Voice. Atraxa is a 4-4 with Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink, because, you know, it needed all those keywords on it. And of course, on top of that, it says the beginning of your end step, Proliferate. Which basically means you choose any of your opponents and or players, and you give each another counter of each kind already there. So, yeah, in a plus one counters build, this just basically says, hey, get more counters on things that you already have counters on. So yeah, take advantage of getting more counters on your creatures, and take advantage of those creatures that have counters on them by ramping at an absurd rate with the new Kodama. And finally, and I guess I should mention here, I could pretty much mention any commander out there that deals with plus plus one counters, and actually, okay, maybe I could also mention, you know, commanders that deal with auras and equipment, and I probably should have done that, but I'm doing it now. Anyways, Hamza Guardian of Ration, yet another fantastic plus one counter commander. It's going to cost one less for each creature control they counter on it, and creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature control they counter on it. So not only can this commander be insanely cheap to cast, but essentially all of your creatures can be as well. And, of course, then by getting more and more creatures into play, with more and more counters on them, you can get more and more lands into play with Kodama the Westry. Regardless, now this quick take is coming to an end, it's time for me to wrap things up and give you my final thoughts on this commander. Yeah, the Kodamas definitely stepped things up with the last two with the Eastry and Westry, and the Westry might just be better than the Eastry, which is saying a lot. I mean, I guess time will tell, but, but yeah, this is a very low-to-the-ground commander, that helps your modified creatures get through, and when they do get through and hit your opponents, you ramp at an absurd rate. To then, you know, get more creatures out, and more lands out, and more modifications, and more lands, and then it, it's just never ending. You're going to be able to get basically every single land in your deck out, most likely. Which might be an over-exaggeration, but it might not be. Yeah, this card is pretty insane. That being said, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for more insane spoilers, I am sure, in the near future, because Kamigawa Neon Dynasty spoiler season has had some fantastic cards so far, and I am sure there are going to be more on the way soon. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.